Hello judges and fellow competitors. We are Sensation and our team members consist of Dang and myself, Ming. We are from Bukit Panjang Government High School and each one of us has different levels of experience in RoboCup competitions. Dang has actually participated in RoboCup Singapore Open in 2021 and RoboCup Asia Pacific Aichi 2021. And I am here the first time in RoboCup. In context, the objective was to move the robot from the start at point A along the marked line on the road through the three orange checkpoints and to end in point B. The methods that we used was to choose the best route, which we had considered two routes, one by the sign line and the other by the pink line. However, seeing that the pink path requires navigating sharper corners at lower speed, we proceeded to focus on the sign line. To code for the best routes, we used the AI development panel to code for the routes that we had identified. C code was occasionally used for advanced actions and conditions. We also fine-tuned the performance. With plenty of time left in the challenge, we made minute speed changes using the AI GUI, aiming to achieve faster and more consistent runtimes. Our strategies was to use case-based line tracking using the inputs from the line follower sensors, we dictated the corresponding response from the robot's view. The further the robot is away from the line, the stronger the correction needs to be. We also had the use of colored markers. Colored markers cladded on the track help us to command the robot or make appropriate decisions such as turning 90 degrees to the left or right. We also used fixed heading sprints to show how it's done in the next section. And after using all the methods and strategies, we came up with a run with a time of 27.594 seconds. And from that, we can see that the use of simple strategies still led to faster run times. So, you have a long straight. Or perhaps you just have no line. And you still want your robot to go fast? Rotation Z to the rescue. The rotation Z reading works just like the heading on a compass. It shows which way the robot is facing. Seems like we can use this reading to make some interesting decisions. If the robot is to the left of its intended heading, then its rotation Z value will be larger than that of our target. Thus, we can command the robot to make a minute correction of 100 to 97. Similarly, if the robot is to the right of its intended heading, then its rotation Z value will be smaller than that of our target. We can therefore command the robot to make a minute correction of 97 to 100. Since the deviation is detected almost instantaneously, the steering response can be kept minimal. This allows the robot to move forward at a speed of no less than 97 across long straights, saving crucial tenths of a second. For the first straight without white lines on which to follow, we can also add a, an additional response upon deviating towards the white lines at the side. So, how can we apply what we learned to the real world? Firstly, our idea of using rotation Z values to stabilize heading and maintain speed can be roughly seen in real-world lane-following technology, where an autonomous car is instructed to follow a specific heading dictated by marked lanes on the road. This function is particularly helpful when car drivers are under fatigue. 
using front-facing cameras, which can detect the contrast between the road and lane markings, the car is able to react upon identifying that it is drifting away from the lane. This is largely similar to our idea of having the robot maintain a selected heading using minute steering movements. In real life, this is also achieved by having the car make minute adjustments in its steering so as to stay within the lane. Secondly, we used quite a lot of corner cutting with the help of colored markers to gain crucial time by allowing the robot to make the most appropriate decisions. However, similar external stimuli in real life should only be used to make legal decisions and not illegal shortcuts, which may cause unwanted consequences. Thus, a fitting way to sign off our presentation would be a short but sharp reminder to all. Shortcuts cut life short. We can only hope it is followed to the letter in the years to come. Thank you for listening.